Hi everybody, uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we will talk a little bit about flexible modeling and how to use that with SOLIDWORKS and CATIA parts. And we'll do a step file as well um, in the webinar today. So there's the agenda. So we're gonna look at that, that in, in flexible modeling. I'll do a quick introduction of boundary systems. Then we'll jump into the demonstration where I'll show you how to import data. So I'll show you a little bit about Import Data Doctor, um, and then we'll move on to flexible modeling with the SOLIDWORKS and the CATIA part. After that, we'll have a quick um, question and answer session. So you can use your, um, your webinar tools to ask those questions, and I'll try to answer them as we, as we go along. So get them out there so I can answer them. Just a little bit about myself. So my name is Pierre Fenter. So I'm a boundary systems technical specialist. Um, my main focus is in the CREO manufacturing side of things. So I've been doing some post processes for CREO. Um, the nice thing about using CREO manufacturing is that you have to use all the tools that, that's available to you. So flexible modeling is quite a big part of that. Um, and so the rest of, um, of CREO as well. So just a little bit about us as boundary systems. So the logos that you see here, that's some of the um, companies we serve. Um, we we help them with um, product lifecycle management, um, data management, care design and consulting. We do some simulation work for them as well. And then we uh, help some of our customers with product development as well. So that's all in our capabilities we have. So some of the accreditations we've got, I think the important ones here are the Winchell Certified um, Implementer. We're also a preferred service provider for, for the PTC products, and we're also certified training partners for PTC. Um, just again, a slide on the, on the solutions that we offer. Main focus here, PTC, but we also do solid thinking in trades and ZWCAD. So then just one slide on flexible modeling, and this is just a short message that I, that I wanna get across to everybody using flexible modeling. Um, and then the important thing is here that flexible modeling is a editing tool. So it's not gonna create any geometry. So just keep that in mind. Um, whenever you bring in your, your, um, your import data, um, it, even if it's a step file, SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, in, um, Inventor, NX, all of those, when you use flexible modeling, you can only manipulate that geometry. Then the other important thing when using flexible modeling, it's not a standalone system. So this is integrated into the clear parametric and you'll use that um, to, to just, or you'll use the flexible modeling just to manipulate data. So you can use it on CREO data as well. So it's not just for imported um, geometry. The nice thing about this is now you've got the best of both worlds. So you've got the flexible modeling where you can just take geometry and you can move it and manipulate it, but you also have the parametric side of things. So you can still go and create your extrudes, um, your holes and things like that, and you can still um, create parametric um, relations between geometry that's already there and the new features that you might add. The next slide is my contact details. So if you have any questions regarding the webinar or any CREO related questions, that's the email you can use. Um, I'll answer your questions as, um, as soon as possible. Okay, sales related questions. So there's the sales email address as well. Okay, so that's it for, for the slides. Um, I think we can jump into CREO and start with that demo. So the first part that I'm going to open up is just a, um, a step file, and we're going to use a little bit of import data doctor on that. Um, I'll just talk you through that, and then we'll use some flexible modeling, and then we'll open up a SOLIDWORKS part, and we'll do a CATIA part as well today. So let's do the step file first. So importing my step file i'm going to use templates um, that that really depends on on the geometry that you're importing um, 
it's it's just my my star templates have already date and plans and things like that. You don't always get that when you bring in step files. Um, the disadvantage when you use templates um, is on the accuracy side, accuracy side of things. So what I'll basically be doing, I'll be forcing my accuracy of my templates onto the imported um, parts. So it depends um, on, on the type of parts. Um, normally I, I play around with it. I'll bring in a part with templates and then without templates and see if the geometry is good or bad. So I'm gonna import this. So you can see we've got a, a bracket type component here and uh, we'll need to make a few changes to this. Let me just switch off a few things over here. And let's look at the you know, what we actually have. So first thing you'll notice that this part is not solid. Okay? If, if it was a solid part, it would have been a gray color. Um, this this color that, that that it's showing now shows me immediately that it's a surface, and I know where to look, so I can see there's a missing surface over here. Also, if you put your part in wireframe, it would highlight that, so you can see the little pink um, missing surface over there. So we'll need to fix this part first, um, just to just to convert it to a sheet metal part. With flexible modeling, you can work on surfaces um, only. Um, but to go to the sheet metal and for this demonstration, I'm going to I'm going to make it a solid part. But the first thing that we'll do is we're going to go into Import Data Doctor. So you just click on your imported feature. You say Edit Definition, and to go into Import Data Doctor, you just select the icon over here. So then you'll see we'll we'll have a few tools that that you can use here. Um, luckily, there's not too many things wrong on this component. What you will be looking for is yellow edges and things like that. If you're using the standard system colors file, um, yellow and pink lines like this, that will indicate problem areas. So luckily for this, we just have a missing surface over there. I'm just quickly going to use my boundary blend tool and I'm going to create a surface. So holding control down. Selecting that so you can see it created that surface over there. And very important, it's still not part of that. So you just have to take it on this side. So you can see it's outside of my component. I'm just going to take that one surface, drag and drop it in there. And you'll notice that it's closed now. Okay, so that's the only error we actually have in this component. So really not a bad import. You get parts that's worse than you have you have to spend a little bit more time in here fixing things. Okay, so let's go and OK. And like with any demo, it's not going to go smoothly. It will always do something funny. Let's just try that again. Okay, so you can see I'm using Creo 4. Uh, this build is M50. And let's just open up the let's open up the step file again. There we go, import, same steps, use template. Okay, so let's give that a go again. Okay, to import later, doctor, boundary blend. So I can drop that in there. And we want to make it a solid. And we say, OK. OK, so there's our solid part. So I'm just, yeah, I've got my edges on, so that's fine. So 
so we the aim of this component is to go to a sheet metal component so you'll see i have a, a cut over here and on the bottom side i've got a I've got like a boss standing out here so the rule for the sheet metal parts is that you you need a uniform thickness for your component so I'm, I, I won't be able to just create a sheet metal part from this so i'm quickly going to use flexible modeling and i'm going to remove some features and then I'm going to do the conversion. And then I'm going to use flexible modeling again to go and make some changes. So, so let's start with flexible modeling first. So the first thing that I'm going to remove is these rounds over here. So I'm going to pick the rounds. And I'll jump into the interface when we do the, the solid parts, uh, the solid work parts. And I'm going to remove that. And I say, OK. I'm going to do the same for the boss here on the other side. I'll use my interface over there. I'm going to say remove. Okay, and then I've also got this little cutout on this side. So I'm going to select one surface. I'm going to select the cut and I say remove. Okay, so now I should be able to convert this component to sheet metal so let's go to a model so you can see i'm still working within the creo interface so i can still go and create extrudes um, holes or anything on this imported file so i'm going to go to sheet metal i'm going to say convert sheet metal i'm going to use a driving surface and i'm going to select my bottom surface and, and there we go so that's a sheet metal part now. You can see my icons also changed to my sheet metal environment. So now if I go into flexible modeling, you'll see my icons also changed over here. So these are specific um, features that you will use within the sheet metal um, flexible modeling environment. So from here, I can go and I can say um, edit a bend. So I can pick the bend. Um, I can say, let's change the the inside radius to 0 0.06 for instance and that's going to change my radius okay. uh, let's take it to let's make it one see what happens when we use that so you can see that updates as i make my changes uh, i can also make my bends i can change that bend now so i can say instead of 90 let's do a 45 for instance so that's just the type of things that you can change that's more sheet metal related. Also a nice one is the pull wall function. So I can start that, pick a wall and I can drag that shorter or longer. Okay, so that's that's more or less what I wanted to show on the on the sheet metal side of things. Um, I can also go and create the flat pattern of this. Um, obviously, you can create the family table or, or whatever you need to do with that further. So that's just the so that was a, a step file that we've imported. We fixed it up with Import Data Doctor. We used flexible modeling to remove some of the features, and then um, we also used flexible modeling to change the actual part. Also, also what you'll notice about flexible modeling is you have all these um, features in the model tree. So I can go back at any stage like you would normally do with Creo. So I can put my insert there. I can edit definition those features. So you've got your normal model tree functionality. Okay, so let's go on to the SolidWorks part. I'm going to close that one. I'm going to say open. So there's my solid work part. So you can see it's got the solid works extension. So this is a raw solid works part that, I'll that I will import. I'm just going to say open. And there it is. Okay. So you'll also notice the model tree it will show you that, that it's a solid works component. So pick that up from the file extension that it used. So if I go into flexible modeling, so 
let's work a little bit through the interface now and let's just see what we can do. So as soon as I select certain geometry, you'll notice that these shape um, surface selections become available. So whatever you select, it will go and look for certain things. So if I, for instance, click this surface over here, and I go to the boss, it will take the, the round and it will take some extra surfaces on that side as well. If I select a cut, uh, where, which one can I select? Uh, let's select just one surface there. If I select the cut, it will highlight everything. Same with this one here. So depending on what you select, um, it will highlight that. So it's just an easy way to go and select the geometry that you need to manipulate. So if you, if you didn't have those tools, you'll have to go and select one surface, hold control down, select another surface, or you can use control shift and select seed and boundary surfaces. But these shape surface tools just make your selection a lot easier. Okay, so you'll do your selections normally first. And from there, you will start manipulating them using the transform tools in this tab over here. Okay. Then in the recognition, this is where you will rec recognize certain features. So rounds and chamfers, patterns and symmetry. And then on the edit, so that's just a quick way to remove certain surfaces and things like that. So this is quite a nice one. I, I use it a lot, especially with the manufacturing side of things. Um, a, a lot of a lot of times you'll get things like this way around. Um, okay, so it's going to be this round if you're doing a, um, a mold, for instance. Those those rounds are normally small, so you need special cutters and things like that. So I'll go and remove them, or I'll change them, make them bigger. Um, the, the, depending if I'll spark them or, or um, mold them out. So um, it all depends on what you need to do. And that brings me to, to, to another point as well. Um, you are working within the CREO environment. So you've got all these features over here. So I know in some cases, rounds will give you issues. Um, let's see if we can find one. Uh, not really in this component. The, the KTR one has a few funny rounds. That's on uh, where the rounds is not actually just a, a, a straight size. Um, it's changing from from a certain radius to a bigger radius or something like that. So in some cases, those rounds is just easier to remove and then just redo them using your normal round feature. Right. So, so the round feature is fairly um, um, advanced within Creo and you can really do a lot with it. So choose what you want to do. So planning, planning your, your changes a little bit makes your life a lot easier. And you've got this parametric tool um, use that. Don't get stuck with just the, the, the flexible modeling um, features that you have. Yeah, so, so let's change quickly one or two things within this component. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this boss over here and I'm going to do a pattern recognition on it. So you can see it will look for um, geometry that's and that's um, that's identical so it picked up those four and it used um, the direction pattern to identify them okay so if i need to go and make changes to them now i can easily do that so i can for instance grab this this one again grab all of it and i can say so i'm going to move this um a certain um distance so that's just a warning to tell me um, that's not going to re reflect in the native model so i'm working within creo now so it's not going to update the, the solid works part so that's fine let's carry on okay so the first thing that you need to do now is i, I need to decide do i only want to move this one or do i want to work within the pattern um, that i've just created so if you're going to work within the pattern you need to select that pattern so i just highlight it and i select it from the model tree and it will identify all the pattern members within that pattern so anything that i do now 
that will change that. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move my dragger as well. So I want to measure from that surface over there. So I just select the surface. And as soon as I move my dragger a little bit, I'll have a dimension. So now I can tell Creo, okay, so move that, move that um, boss or that geometry, move that a certain distance. And in this case, I just want to move it 0.2. And you can see all my, all my pattern members are moving together. So I say, well, that was my first change that I needed to do. And I can say, okay. And that will update that model. Okay, so that was change number one. So we, we just used a normal using the, um, the, the dragon. The next one I'm going to use is um, I'm going to move my, um, my geometry with the dimension. Okay, so I'm going to take, let's see, uh, it's not grabbing everything that I need to grab. So I need to use my, so I'm holding shift down. So I just pick one surface, hold shift down. And select that surface, and that's going to grab all the geometry. So that's a seed and boundary selection. And then I'm going to create a move using a dimension. So, and the thing that we need to change is we need to change this angle a little bit. So I need to select where, uh, what dimension um, do I need to create. So I'm going to select. That surface over there, this one over there, and that's that's creating an angle for me. Okay, so depending on the references that you select, that's going to give you um, the dimension that you need. If I wanted a, a linear dimension, um, I need to select, for instance, a surface over here and a surface over there. That will give me a linear. So, and you'll need to select flat surfaces for that as well. So in this case, I'm just going to change my angle. That's a change what you need to do. 10.5, you can see angle changed slightly. That's exactly what we needed for that change. And I can finish that up. Okay, so going on to the, to the next change that I quickly want to show you. So I'm going to move this component over here. I'm first going to make it smaller um, by selecting this surface over here, I'm going to do, and I'm going to change that to uh, 0 0.5 radius. So I used the analytic tool over there, and then I'm going to add another one. So now I'm going to use, um, I'm going to create, I'm going to take that cut, I'm going to apply a move by dragger, but I'm going to create a copy of this. So create a copy of your feature, you pick that, and I can just move that. So if you need to do it with a dimension, you can do that. I'm just gonna drag and drop it for this. Okay. And then I can also mirror that. So for the mirror, so remember we are working within that Creo environment. So I don't have any datum planes within this. Within this, so I'm quickly going to create a datum plane for my center. Let's grab that point over there, that point over there, and let's use something over here, the center of that. And that's going to create a center plane for me. And I just need to show that. Now I can take that feature over here. Select that again. Oh, sorry, I need to go into flexible modeling first. Grab that cut, mirror that using this datum plane, and it will create that that side. Okay, so so that's using the mirror and the, the things to, to, to manipulate that. So the important thing here is use your, use your selections 
and then decide how do you want to um, manipulate that? How do you want to transform that? Okay, and then also, what do I need to, to recognize? So we've recognized the pattern over here, and we've made a change to that using these tools and the selection tools. Okay, so you can jump onto this part and you can change what, whatever you need or um, I'm going to Creo and use those tools to add features. So it just use, it just create a, a simple thing just in the normal environment. So I'm going to use, I'm going to create a data max over there. And let's place a hole on that surface. That hole is a little bit too big. Do it like that. Finish. Okay, so using your normal features within Creo, you're going to change this SolidWorks part. Um, I think that's what I wanted to show in this component. Um, and that covers most of the flexible modeling things as well. Um, so let's quickly open up the Katia part. So Katia part, uh, it's a V5 part, there it is. Okay. So there we go. So that's our, that's our Katia part. So you can see also, it will show you that. If you're going to flexible modeling, it's the same environment, it's the same rules. So flexible mo modeling, don't really care too much about what, what file type it is. Like I've mentioned within the in the slides, it's only looking at, excuse me, it's only looking at, at um, geometry and you're gonna manipulate that using the tools. So step file, Katia part, NX files, inventor files, um, doesn't matter, you can use this tool and you can go and manipulate that geometry. Okay, so um, what can we change over here? Mm. Let's see, so let's go for, let's change, so just a quick remove, so I'm using that. So what I want to show on that one. So there's a shamf on here as well. I'm going to pick that as well. And I'm just straight going to remove that. Okay, just a warning again. But it's, not, it's not going to change the actual Katia part. We're working within Creo here. And you can also see it took that shape of that surface. So it's not just a straight or something like that. It's actually taking... The, the shape. So it's like when you create an extrude within Creo and you tell it to go up until a certain surface, it's going to take that shape of that surface. It's the same thing within the flexible modeling environment. Okay, so now again, I can go and I can create anything on that particular surface if I need to. Um, let's change around in this. We haven't done that. So I'm just going to say, let's pick those two. Let's say edit round. That's a two now. So well, let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's go for three. And this is now millimeters. It's changing that. Oh, I didn't change that one. Sorry. Okay, I'm not happy with that one. Okay, so maybe that's a good example where I can pick it. Ooh, it's okay, that's also not too happy with that. Okay, so we'll have to use a different meta method to go and change that particular round. So you can also see it's on a it's on a sweep, so it's actually not a round, it's a variable round. 
that you that you need to change over there. Okay, so not going to do that on the flexible modeling. We'll use our normal Creo features to go and manipulate that. Um, also, something that I wanted to show in here was so this one over here. That the analytical change. Yeah. Okay. So what I wanted to show you. So this is quite a complicated um, round. So I'm just going to take that, make that 1.5. You will notice that the rounds and everything around it changed as well on this sweep surface over here. Okay. So that's not, and that that won't be as as easy using your normal. Creo tools to go and make that change and keeping that surface um, um, the same. So you'll have to you have, you'll have to copy surfaces and use some of your surfacing tools to to get that change. But the point being that certain things will be easier in flexible modeling, like I've showed over there, and then something as simple as a as a round that you need to change can be a little bit trickier. That that all depends on the geometry that you are importing. So get a feel for your parts. You, 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 will, you will know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, you've got all these tools um, and plan it a little bit and decide which one is going to be um, the, the easiest and the quickest for you to use. Okay, so I think that's, that's what I wanted to show from a, um, from a career point of view. So I'm quickly going to put my details back up. And then you guys can um, type in those questions um, using the pane on your on, on your on, on your webinar tool, and I'll get back to them as they come in. Thank you. I'll give you a minute or so just to get those questions in. Okay, so I just quickly have a question about what version of Creo I'm on, did I use here? So that was this was Creo 4M50. Um, so it's it was not not Creo 5. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. So there's a there's my contact details again. Um, if you need to, if you think of any questions, 
let me know and I'll get back to you. And I will go ahead and I'll end the webinar. There's no more questions. Thank you for attending and hope to talk to you guys soon. Thank you.